Now in part A, you're supposed to figure out how many students there are. So every confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. So in this case, we're estimating a proportion. So our point estimate is p hat. And our margin of error is made up of a critical value, z star, and a standard error, which in this case is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. So we need to figure out what p hat is. Now p hat is going to be the very middle of this interval. So we can find the middle of the interval by adding the two values and dividing by 2. So p hat is 0.7. So the middle of this interval is 0.7. So if you take 0.7 and you add and subtract a margin of error, you end up with this interval. So let's figure out how much the margin of error is. So from 0.7 to 0.816 is 0.116. So now we know the margin of error is 0.116. So this quantity here has to equal 0.116. So let's fill in what we have. We know p hat is 0.7, so 1 minus p hat, the complement, is 0.3, and that whole margin of error has to equal 0.116. To figure out what z star is, let's start by stamping a normal distribution. Now, if you don't have one of these stamps yet, get one on Amazon. They're awesome. So since this is a 95% confidence interval, we want the critical value z star to be what cuts off the middle 95% of the normal distribution. So we're going to have positive z star up here and negative z star down here. Now, if there's 95% in the middle, then the area right here must be 0 0.025, since the area under this entire curve is 1, and the 5% would be split here and here. Now, we need this value because we can use inverse norm to find z star right there. We can either find this z star or we can find this upper z star. Let's actually find this upper z star right here. Okay, the area to the left of z star is 0.95 plus 0 0.025. In other words, 0.975. So this is the value we're going to look up on the calculator. If you press second, then vars, you get to the distribution menu and go to inverse norm. It's going to ask for the area, and what it wants is the area to the left of your cutoff point. So here's our cutoff point. The area to the left, like we just discussed, is 0.975. So that tells us z star is 1.9599. You could probably round this to uh, 1.96. In fact, you could probably even round this to 2 if you use the empirical rule. I bet when they come out with the solution guidelines for this AP free response question, they'll allow for any of those as long as you show your work. But I want to be as precise as possible, so I'm going to use this value. All right, so let's go back to the margin of error. We just found that z star is this 1.9599. So algebraically, when we solve this equation for n, the first thing we'd want to do is get rid of that z star. So let's divide 0.116 by the z star we just found. Okay, algebraically, our next step would be to square both sides here. And while we're at it, let's multiply the numerator. Now, some students actually have a little trouble with the algebra in the next step. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides by n. So if I multiply this side by n, these n's cancel out. So now we have this uh, really small number times n equals 0.21. So the next step would be to divide both sides by this really small number. That will isolate n, and we'll actually have our answer. So I'm just going to type 0.21 divided by the value we already have on there. And you end up with n is about equal to 59.95. Now, I bet this original confidence interval is rounded to the thousandth place. So I bet the original sample size was actually 60, since you can't have that many people in a sample. So the final answer is there was 60 students in the sample. So I did the calculations for if you had z star equal to 2, and you end up with an n of about 62.4. So I suppose you would round that down to 62 students, or maybe up to 63 students. We'll, we'll see what they put on the scoring guidelines. If you use z star as 1.96, uh, you get 59.95 again. So you'd get the same answer, 60 students. 
So in part B, uh, we start investigating the, the pretty bad way this environmental science teacher conducted their study. So we'd expect response bias here. Response bias may have been introduced because the students were asked one at a time, not in an anonymous way, about an action their environmental science teacher likely cares about, recycling plastic bottles. Now, this would be an intimidating situation, and you'd likely respond yes. So how would that affect our point estimate? So we can say students likely felt pressure to say yes, they did regularly recycle plastic bottles. And this would cause our point estimate to overestimate the true proportion of students at the school who would respond yes to the question. Anytime you identify a bias, you should always identify the direction. So in this case, we'd expect an overestimate of our true parameter value since there was a response bias favoring saying yes. Now the first part of part C was probably the easiest part of this question. Since the probability of heads is 0.5, the expected required nose would be 300 times 0.5, so 150. Now the second part of part C is pretty tricky. Let's start by dividing our sample into two parts. We'd expect 150 of our 300 students to just say no. We'll call them the forced no group. Then the other 150 students are giving an honest answer. So we need to estimate our parameter based on these honest students. Since there was 213 total no's and we expect 150 of those to be forced no's, that leaves us with 63 honest no's. So since we have 150 in our honest group, we could figure out our point estimate for the no's, which would be 63 over 150, or 0.42. Now the question asks us to come up with a point estimate for the proportion of yes responses, which will just be the complement of this. So 1 minus 0.42 is 0.58. So our point estimate for the true proportion of students at the school who would answer yes is 0.58. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might want to check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's available on Amazon, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, also, if you want to learn more about the process used in this particular problem, uh, Google Randomized Response. It's a pretty neat technique that's used to get accurate answers to questions people might be inclined to lie on.